Now before everybody gets wound up, this video is not about how I think AAA developers are trash or AAA games are trash. More so, in light of recent blunders in the AAA space, this video is just about how YouTube creators, or the creator economy in general, may have a bigger role to play in any development than you might think. Now this video isn't really meant to take aim at one studio or another, one game or another in the AAA space, more so to highlight some recent issues that have occurred uh, that just sort of reiterate that the AAA space is in a unique and different place than it really ever has been, really ever used to be. Some of which is the fault of their own and some of it is just the changing times and culture and landscape that we currently live in. One of the biggest and most recent ones is coming out of Ubisoft, everyone has probably heard about about this, seen this by now, the sort of failure, if you will, of how Assassin's Creed Shadows has been handled and the release of it, the lore having the main characters be who they are has been controversial since the game was announced from the very beginning. Personally, I don't give a shit as long as the game is really good, however, if you are trying to make a historically accurate game, then the game should probably be as historically accurate as possible. I don't know how far and wide the lore goes with these characters, I don't care that they're African American. American, black, Asian, women, men, N none of that really matters to me at all, but it has been an issue from the very beginning. Fast forward to the last couple of weeks, Ubisoft announces on Twitter that the game is going to be delayed until February of 2025, ironically enough, which is Black History Month, and then seemingly insults Japanese culture by using the Nagasaki, uh, maybe Hiroshima, uh, broken gate in one of their uh, sculptures, one of their little uh, playthings. I don't know what the hell you want to call it. It's like a trinket, like some shit you used to get for a pre-order. It's just like the two main characters standing in front of a broken gate. Uh, and apparently this broken gate is a is a national symbol uh, in Japanese culture of the uh, nuclear bomb dropping in that city and, and what was left afterwards. So it, it was not well received is, is the point there. It, it was not well received at all. Ubisoft has taken a ton of shit for this game uh, for a lot of different reasons. I personally am all about a good samurai game. I know that Ghost of Tsushima, which is receiving a follow-up, are supposed to be really good games as well. But I was looking forward to Assassin's Creed Shadows and I was hoping that it was going to be a good game. Now I'm wondering if the game will even release. Now another game I've mentioned in other videos is Concord. And Concord was far from an early access title or an end development title. It was quite frankly, the budget of some major motion pictures. I believe they said the number was roughly $400 million they spent on this game, uh, only to have roughly 17,000 players play it. Uh, that could be wrong, but the number of people who bought it and played it was staggeringly low. Uh, and from everything that I saw in the game, watched of the game, it didn't necessarily look like it was a bad game. Uh, and this very well may be the case, or a case of, a AAA developer craft something that yes does play well and that may run well but it's just not what people want it's been a game that was pushed into a genre a niche that's already dominated by other games exactly like it that already have an extremely strong foothold in their space as well as the competitive and pro series and it just doesn't work nobody wants it nobody plays it so they lose 400 million dollars on it another game that came out of a studio that I have been holding my my breath for for a long long time was Starfield and I'm obviously holding my breath for the Elder Scrolls 6 let's not get it mistaken however my faith in the ability of that studio to deliver on that product is all but gone Starfield released a while back now at least two or three years no correct me if I'm wrong the game was really not very well received at all uh, some people liked it I never played it it seemed extremely boring every uh, game gameplay, clip, montage, whatever I watched of the game, uh, did not grasp me at all. Now, some could say the same about the Elder Scrolls games. I could totally see that from an outsider's perspective. I think 
maybe it comes down to what uh, attracts you to the game if you're really big into what they've provided through the space uh, simulation of the game versus maybe the fantasy world that Oblivion, Skyrim, and things like that offer. Um, but even after they released their expansion, it still just really didn't seem to captivate anyone's attention, didn't hold anyone. So many of the elements and themes that they tried to incorporate into the game worked well sometimes, but then at scale didn't really work at all. It just seemed like they were stepping into shoes that were too big and they couldn't walk in them. Now, I've never played World of Warcraft, but I know the World of Warcraft community has felt the same way about Blizzard for a long time, which is why when World of Warcraft, I think they call it Vanilla, or OG, came back to the scene, it quickly became the most popular version of World of Warcraft, because for a long time, Blizzard has not really delivered what people wanted in that space. Now, I've been talking about all sorts of different games, mostly RPGs, actually, and I primarily play first-person shooters, and don't even get me started on what's wrong with that space. We're playing Warzone, which is a game that has no idea what it is. It doesn't know what it wants to be. The game has gone completely off the rails. We're talking about in 2025. <laughs> hey, hey guys, Verdance is, co is coming back. We're getting Verdance back, a map from five years ago. That's the new content we're getting. Oh, and by the way, it's going to be the only map in the game to play. For whatever reason, Activision, Raven, whoever it is, Sledgehammer, Infinity War, we just can't figure out how to put more maps in rotation. So for Battle Royale, you're gonna have one map to play for a fucking year. You know, that's where we're at with Warzone. Uh, Apex, I mean, come on, man. We're on the 23rd season, 24th season of Apex. It's time for a new project, man. It's time for a new IP. Like I said, don't even get me started on shooters, man. We've got some good things coming down the pipeline, but golly, it's, it's tough. It's a struggle. Now, all this is to bring me to the main point of the video, and again, AAA is not dead. AAA is not going anywhere. However, AAA, in whatever capacity that it exists, and whoever these developers and creators are having to answer to, and the political agendas they're trying to fulfill, and the wokeisms they like to insert into their games and marketing, it's all made the modern AAA experience feel more out of touch than it probably ever has. So, inject the YouTube creator economy, right? The YouTube gaming creator economy. Now, I by no means think that YouTubers and gamers are going to be the salvation of the gaming industry. Uh, quite frankly, they probably never will be, but it is really, really good to see that the creators on the platforms are, that are successful are utilizing their passions and hopefully trying to go about this the smart and the right way to bring things to the industry in their genres that they feel like is missing, that they want to play, and that other people may want to play as well. To start things off, we'll talk about a game called Transients. Now, this is coming from uh, a creator on YouTube who goes by the name of Big Fry. I've watched him for a long, long time. He's always been that guy who's very hypercritical of games that release in early access, which I am as well, if you're familiar with my channel at all. You know how I feel about the umbrella term that is early access and the lack of standards that come with early access gaming. That's an entirely different subject though, but he's been around for a while critiquing mostly first-person shooter games, third-person shooter games, and he took it upon himself as he gained success and leverage in the online creation space to create a studio with him and a handful of developers. I believe the studio is named Resurgence. He was able to successfully find an investor. I'm, I'm going to say this part probably once or twice because I really hope people pick up on what he did here. He's developing a game that by all or, or for all definition whatever is going to be an early access game right beta game the umbrella term that is early access but he found an investor offline he did his due diligence in vetting them and what their true intentions were the studio made the collective decision to go with this investor who funded the game i'm gonna say that one more time guys and bear with me i know you hate to hear it i have so many 
many people on this channel who hate to hear anyone talk about early access games. Big Fry, his team, developing the game Transients, which we're fixing to get into, fully funded the game offline by finding an investor, someone who had the capital to put up, who believed in the vision, who they vetted so that they weren't taken advantage of as a studio and developers, so that the project could be completed or at least gotten to a point to where they felt like they could release a product that they may or may not charge for out the gate, they probably will, but that has been funded from the beginning by someone offline. Okay, I'm done. I'm off my soapbox. Anyway, Transients. Transients is up on Steam. You can add it to your wish list and there is a demo that you can play. I'll include some of the gameplay from the demo that I played here myself and the, the game was good. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's it's got a lot of the bones that a lot of these earlier shooters have. Um, but again, you know, for me, it's all about execution. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what your vision is. I just made a, a video on this, my most disliked video to date, which is fine. Don't care at all uh, because it's the truth and nobody likes to hear the truth. But all that matters in the end is execution. Okay, that's it. That's all that matters. Now, <clears throat> up on the Steam page, it's still listed under Big Fry Media. Uh, however, I do believe they have officially formulated their studio uh, titled Resurgence. His uh, description of that was that they are trying to uh, inject a resurgence of quality games into the market, so that makes sense. The game is described as you are a hired mercenary who keeps the books balanced by any means necessary. Uh, this time, though, you are the intended target. Take a journey through New Houston in the year 2056 and follow one man's tale of revenge as he escapes transience. Now, if you haven't seen anything on this game, there's, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, futuristic elements to it than we probably currently have in modern shooters. So they're pushing it out just a tiny little bit. It does look like there's going to be a single player campaign as well, where you're going to play a gentleman by the name of Eli Reed, an accountant for hire who ends up on the wrong side of the gun. Now, like I said, I played the demo. It was a solid demo. I've kept up with the dev vlogs myself. It looks good. They're making good progress, it seems. They've been able to hire full-time employees now that they've established themselves with an investor as a studio. So I'm anxious to see what comes of this game. Big Fry has always been a really big fan of tactical, sort of that gritty, hardcore, SOCOM style shooter, which was one of my favorite games of all time. So I'm very anxious to see where this game goes, but it is grounded in a modern-esque reality. We're not super far ahead, like, you know, 30, 50, 40, 50. We're in 2056, so not too, too bad. If you're interested in checking out the Transients demo to see how it feels, how it plays for yourself, head over to the Steam page, download it, play it. Keep up with the dev vlogs too. They post those fairly regularly. I believe he just posted a new one maybe two or three weeks ago. And let me know what you think of the game. Next on the list is going to be Spectre Divide. Now, this isn't a game that Shroud directly developed or spent a lot of time programming, I don't believe. Uh, he more so just acted as a creative director for the studio that did develop it. And I don't really know how else to say it. I'm sure the Valorant community is probably going to get pretty mad at me, but this game is really just... It's just Valorant. It's a direct competitor to Valorant. Um, it, it does have a completely different art style than Valorant, and it does have several unique mechanics compared to Valorant. But for all intent and purpose, it, it is a Valorant competitor. It, it's a good game. I played the game in early a uh, access when they released it as a, uh, a closed beta, whatever they did a few months ago before they actually released the game. It's, it's a good game developed by Mountaintop Studios. There really is, for me, no other way to describe it than it is Valorant, but you have two lives. Uh, and again, I know the hardcore crowd of Valorant or maybe even the hardcore crowd of Spectre Divide at this point is going to rush in and tell me how wrong I am and, and how they're nothing alike and blah, blah, blah. Well, they are. I mean, they are. It's a 3v3. It's not a 5v5. But the reason it's a 3v3 is because you have two lives, essentially. You have a puck that you can use to throw out different areas of the map so that your doppelganger essentially can teleport to and from. And I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's the same one tap headshot instant kill type thing where you can shoot an entire mag into someone's chest and they won't die. Um, you know, unique hero abilities, unique character abilities. Uh, it's got the cell shading look going on. It's, it's a good game. It's fun. I mean, I liked the game. I didn't have a problem with it at all. Uh, but 
that's really the best way that I know to describe it. If you haven't checked out Spectre Divide, it is free. It is available on Steam. If you're familiar with Valorant, then you're going to be right at home with this game, uh, even Counter-Strike. But I would say they don't really fall too too closely in line because of, uh, you know, the, the fantasy element of it, the art style. But it's a good game. And again, Shroud, I don't think, specifically had any type of programming or... 3D artistry role. He may have. I have not checked to see if he did or not, but I do know that he did act in, at the very least, a creative direction capacity for these guys to help get the game to where it is now. And it is a good game. So if you have any thoughts on Spectre Divide, uh, again, let me know what you think about it. I'm going to do a little two for one here because the first one I'm going to mention, uh, you know, I don't I don't I don't really know if it's even going to I don't know what's going to happen to it. And I don't think at this point anyone knows what's going to happen to it because of all of the, you know, sort of recent controversy. But it has to be mentioned because it is purely what this video is about. And that is the game Dead Drop. Now, if you don't know what Dead Drop is, if you've never heard of Dead Drop, Dead Drop is a vertical extraction shooter that that by and large only exists because of Dr. Disrespect and a co-founder of his that started the studio to see that the game came to fruition. Uh, it started off very early with something called Snapshots. I think it was originally called Project Moon, and it was their way of being transparent and allowing the uh, you know the player base to, to, to play the game while they built it. Now, I'm not here to talk about the controversy and all of this that happened with Dr. Disrespect. The point is is that Dr. Disrespect is a major player in the in the YouTube or content creation space who developed a game studio, funded the game studio, and for all intent and purpose created this game. Uh, he did not literally program it or work on, you know, all of the 3D art. He, he probably did work on a little bit of it, but the point is is that it wouldn't exist without him. It was his vision, it was his idea, something he's been harboring in his own mind, you know, keeping in the back pocket for a while. Now, I don't think Dead Drop is still accessible anymore. I think they got to <clears throat> snapshot maybe six or seven and then they shut it down for, uh, you know, continued development, which was probably a good idea because uh, the game was as bare bones as it could possibly be. Uh, if you didn't play it, you can look up some gameplay on it. I'll include some gameplay here, but it had good mechanics. Um, it wasn't the best. I think it could certainly be a lot better in many, many, ways compared to some of the other games on this list but it's there now whether that game will ever release or have any of the backing and hype that it might have had from largely his community early on is up for debate uh they are apparently are still working on it and have released some imagery of the game it does look a lot better as far as the way that the world has built up built out the texturing all that good stuff but that remains to be seen and the second one i was going to mention right there is Operation Harsh Doorstop. Now, this game is not new. I believe it was probably first announced, I don't even know, maybe like in 2017, something like that. I could be wrong. I know it was, was being talked about in 2019, but this game has been uh, developed and largely guided by a YouTuber who goes by the name of Blue Drake. And it's, uh, you know, kind of your modern milsim, tactical squad, uh, arma sort of style shooter. Now, I don't know quite how far in development they are currently. There has been an update to the game recently, I believe. I think it was a modding update. But as far as I know, they are still actively working on it. It is available on Steam for free right now. And out of roughly 20,000 reviews, they are all actually mostly positive. And again, this is coming from a YouTuber and the people that he is working with. The only thing that it seems to be lacking, according to what a lot of people have said, is just a more fully fleshed out experience. You know, it, it, it's it's so early in its life cycle that it really needs more depth to it. But overall, it seems to have really good reviews. And if you are a fan of Milsim shooters, this might be something that's for you. I have not played it yet. Granted, it is free. I probably will download it uh, and give it a go. But if you've played Operation Harsh Doorstop, let me know how it is. Uh, I've heard that it's a lot of fun to play with friends, playing it by yourself, maybe not so much. But this is something that Drake has been talking about and working on for a long time. I think it actually may have started as 
as a, I could be totally wrong, but a Battlefield mod uh, and then developed into something else. I remember Project Realism was something he was talking about for a while. But uh, anyway, Operation Hor Harsh Doorstop, it released in February 15th of 2023. Let me know what you think of this game if you've played it. I'll have to download it and play it myself. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last but certainly not least, a game by the name of Bellium. I believe that's how it's pronounced. This one is coming from the YouTube creator Karma Cut. Has a pretty substantial following over on his YouTube channel and has been making gaming content focused on shooters for a long time. Same sort of story. Took his success, his passion, his drive for the gaming space and decided to go his own way with it. So the game is Bellium. There is isn't a ton out on, I guess, what the game kind of is yet. It's still in development by all uh, means. Um, the website describes it as a realistic FPS with authentic gunplay, platoon scale, strategic planning, and squad level tactical execution. Designed to create intense firefights, Bellium demands that players apply real world tactic tactics and coordinate as a team. Now there is a release trailer uh, for the game on YouTube, uh, I believe on Karma Cut's channel, as well as the dedicated Bellium channel. It looks really cool. Uh, the gameplay so far for the people who have gotten their hands on it looks good. Uh, it still seems to be pretty early in the development life cycle, so I'm not too, too sure how it plays across a wide variety of systems or what a wide variety of players would experience with the game once they got their hands on it. But nevertheless, the game looks really cool. Of a lot of the YouTube creator games that I've seen that are popping up on the radar that are being worked on. This one definitely grabbed my attention. Uh, something about the grit to it, uh, like it was describing itself, the real-time tactics, the emphasis on team play. It seems like it could be a really dope-ass game. So definitely check out the trailer if you haven't seen that yet. They do have an active Discord. Uh, you can also come over here to their website, uh, contact them if you're a creator, uh, potentially try to get your hands on some early access content. Uh, they are hiring as well, so you could uh, maybe apply for, your, for a job if you're looking for that. They do have a few uh, updates as far as uh, what they've been working on with the game, not a ton. I'm not sure how often they're updating this versus maybe their, their Discord server. Uh, but overall, I mean, the game looks pretty sick. I mean, it's built in Unreal Engine 5, which is going to become a mainstay for pretty much everything going forward. Uh, Unreal Engine 5 is just kind of the way to go, uh, unless you're a, a larger studio who can, I guess, afford to have an in-house engine. But otherwise, uh, definitely look up some content on this game for the people who have been able to preview it, get their hands on it. Check out the trailer, check out the website, hop into the Discord if you'd like to keep up with it. Check out Karma Cut's channel and content. I'm really looking forward to where this game goes and what this game uh, becomes, even though there doesn't seem to be a ton available for it right now. It still seems very promising. Alrighty, folks, if you've made it this far with me to the end of this video, then I greatly appreciate you. This video was not designed to deep dive into every single one of these games and what they're all about and what they feature. It's, it's not an essay on the games themselves. It's meant to highlight that there is a growing YouTube creator community that is developing games. Uh, those would probably be considered indie games. I don't think YouTube games is going to be a thing. They are indie games. That's what they are. They're just being developed by people on the platform who have garnered an audience, probably achieved some degree of financial success, and then have turned that around, put it into their passion for gaming, and who are trying to develop things that are hopefully going to push the gaming industry forward at the very least. It's going to force other studios and other creators to up their level of, of, of execution. The competition is not a bad thing. I've said it before. There doesn't have to be a killer of any game. You know, Arena Breakout is not a killer of Tarkov. Spectre Divide is not a killer of Valorant. We need these things because they help drive innovation. And I'm not talking about the way that Warzone defines innovation, which is by 
copying and pasting a game and throwing a title on it, Modern Warfare 3, which was just Modern Warfare 2, Verdansk was a five-year-old map that we're just going to release five years later and call it new content, the only map you're going to be able to play for a year. That's not innovation. That is not game development. That's laziness. That's the epitome of what Warzone has become. Tangent over there. The point is, is that it's good to see we need to have these things. It's good to see that people who are in a position to use some of their resources to do these th types of things are doing it because the AAA space and the early access gaming space at large have really, really struggled, man. I've talked about it many times, and again, I'm not going to talk about it here, but early access has really done a lot of damage to gaming, it, 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 at least in the first-person shooter space. It's not that early access is inherently bad. It's not. It's just that there's no regulation. There's no standard set for what early access is and should be. AAA developers, companies rather, the programmers and the artists, I don't think this really applies to them at all. They're just there to do their job, to have fun doing what they love. But the AAA companies, man, they're just, they're ever increasingly out of touch. They're releasing things that nobody wants to play. They're listening to player feedback and completely ignoring it. That's what's happened with Battlefield for the last five years. You know, all they had to do was give us exactly what we said we wanted and they just completely ignored it. Completely ignored it. There's just some type of disconnect that has occurred. Maybe it will continue to occur, maybe it won't. But AAA gaming has just become something sort of strange, and it's just like dirty, lukewarm bath water. You know, you're just sitting in it, you know you're probably clean, but you still feel a little bit dirty and you know you should get out, but you know when you get out you're going to be a little cold. And that's just where we are right now. And what really matters in the end is the execution, the vision, the passion, all of that stuff that you write down on the whiteboard and in your little journal and all that. It matters and it's important, but the most important factor is the execution. And that's what we're desperately lacking right now. Gray Zone Warfare has nobody playing it. There's no one streaming Gray Zone Warfare on Twitch. I think I saw 30 people watching Gray Zone Warfare on Twitch and they just keep teasing this Night Ops update. And it's just like, dude, nobody's playing the game. What are you waiting on, man? You should be releasing content every single month, every six months. And here I am talking about it like I know how difficult it is. I, I understand that it's difficult. I know it takes time, but nobody's playing your game. And you're sitting here on Twitter teasing people with pictures of your new content, the big, the big content update, man, it's coming. Bro, release it now. No one is online. No one's playing it. I'm ranting. I'm raving. The list of those types of things for me just goes on and on and on. To wrap it up, if there are YouTube creators that you follow that have their hands in game development, then share those with me below. If you have experienced a YouTube creator's game or, you know, their studio's game, uh, however they have it going, let me know. Let me know what experiences you've had that you enjoyed. What you think about the emergence and the rise of YouTube creators, gaming content creators, dipping their toes, their feet into developing games that they feel like we are missing and that we need let me know what you think about it i think it's a good thing i can i, I think it can be a good thing a great thing if if it can be executed upon uh, which is what remains to be seen and what i hope happens but anyway um if you would like to be a part of these discussions please drop me a sub on youtube drop me a follow on twitch it's totally free liking the video goes a long way as well again totally free but these are the types of things we like to discuss here we like to get into here um, i'm live every day this october we're doing a 31 day days of halloween challenge we're 2.26 out of 3 on twitch we're hoping to get that affiliate before the end of the month if we're lucky but nevertheless having anyone and everyone that wants to be there come in drop a line start a conversation about this kind of thing or whatever may be going on in your world is always awesome 
Anyway, guys and gals, I thank you very much for making it through my TED Talk here today. I will see you online.